Tom's Midnight Garden by Philippa Pierce Dramatised by Judy Allen arrived. I have to go now. Tom! Where are you? Uncle Alan's here. I don't want to go to Uncle Alan and Aunt Gwen's. I don't think they've even got a garden. I want to stay here and build our tree house. Tom! You know you mustn't go near Peter. It's all right. I'm talking through the door. Pete, I'll write you every day. Goodbye. Goodbye, Tom. Tom! Come in. I'm sorry, Tom. We don't want to send you away. Your father and I will miss you. And so will poor Peter. But it's the only way to stop you getting the measles. It's all right. Tom, do remember you'll be a visitor. And, oh, Tom, do try to be good. Alan, we're so grateful to you and Gwen for taking Tom at such short notice. Oh, we're glad to help out. Uh, I expect we'll get on reasonably well, <clears throat> won't we, Tom? Yes, Uncle Alan. Goodbye, Tom. Give my love to Auntie Gwen. Tom? It's much bigger than our house. <laughs> yes, but it isn't a whole house any longer. It was converted into flats some years ago. Ah, there's your arm. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> come on in. Uncle Alan will bring you a place. Uh, Let me give you a welcome kiss. <laughs> Tom, it's lovely to have you here. How is it? Peter. Oh, I hope you're not going to be too bored. Our flat is very small. Oh, what's that door at the back of the hall? Have you got a garden after all? Oh, I'm afraid not, Tom. Just a sort of backyard, very pokey, with rubbish bins, nowhere to play. Did you have a good journey? We came through Ely. Tom wanted to climb the cathedral tower. I had to tell him it was out of the question while he's in quarantine for measles. But I bought him a postcard, didn't I, Tom? Uh, yes, thank you. We've got a grandfather clock. It isn't ours. It belongs to old Mrs. Bartholomew. Look at the top of that. It's incredible. It is also utterly unreliable. You'll have noticed, Tom, that it's struck one, despite the fact that it is now five o'clock. Don't, no, don't touch it, Tom. Mrs. Bartholomew is very particular about her clock. If she's so particular about it, why doesn't she have it in her flat with her? Because it's screwed to the wall at the back. The screws have all rusted in. Keeps good enough time, but seldom chooses to strike the right hour. <clears throat> Our flat is up here. I've never seen inside a grandfather clock. No, Tom, don't try and open it. <laughs> its voice is so penetrating, I can even hear it in bed at night. Its voice? I mean, of course, its chime. Come away from it, Tom. Come up and have tea. <laughs> Here we are. This is our flat. Mrs. Bartholomew lives up those stairs in the attic flat. Come inside, my dear. I'm sorry I snapped at you, but you see, Mrs. Bartholomew owns the whole house. She's our landlady, so we don't want to do anything to annoy her. Now, this is your bedroom. There are bars across the bottom of the window. I'm not a baby. They're not for you, Tom. This window had bars across it when we moved in. The bathroom window has them too, for that matter. See, I've put 
flowers on your chest of drawers. And here are some books for you to read. School stories for girls. They were mine when I was a child. Now, I've got a nice tea ready for you. I'm a good cook and I'm going to spoil you for food. Dear Peter, this card is a picture of the Cathedral Tower at Ely. Uncle Alan wouldn't let me climb it. The house here is flat and there isn't any garden. Ugh, I can hear Uncle Alan through the wall having his bath. There is a clock here that strikes wrong. It says it's three, but really it's six. I don't know what I'll do all day. Would you like to help me cook, Tom? I could show you how to whip the cream. I know how to whip cream. brought you a new jigsaw puzzle, Tom. I think you'll find it most interesting. It's a map of the world. Shrimp sauce on the fish today, Tom. You'll like that. I wish I could have gone out and caught the shrimps. I'll put the wireless on for you, Tom. Top of the form is about to begin. We can test your general knowledge. Peter, I hate it here. It's the worst hole I've ever been in. I don't know what to write to you about. Every day is the same. I can't go out. I can't even answer the door to the milkman in case I give him the measles. I'd do anything to get out of it. To be somewhere else. Anywhere. Tom! What are you doing with the light on at this hour? I can't sleep. All children sleep. Now, put away your writing things. Now, good night. Oh, I can't sleep. I can't sleep. I could go and see if there's something to eat. Mm. Biscuits? Mm. But I don't want a biscuit. What is it? Are you hungry? <laughs> Speaking as someone who has watched him at meal times, I hardly think so. No, I was just bored. I couldn't sleep. I'm sorry about the cup. It's right. It isn't broken. All the same, Tom, there must be no more of this. You must understand you are not to put your light on once it has been turned out. Nor equally are you to get out of bed. Not even to get up in the morning. No, don't be silly. But you are not to get up otherwise. Not even if I need to. Badly. <clears throat> of course, you must go to the uh, lavatory, but uh, he will go straight back to bed afterwards. A child of your age needs ten hours sleep. Yeah, so you go to bed at nine in the evening and you do not get up until seven in the morning. It is for your own good time. You understand? Yes. Now, I want you to promise to observe our wishes. Will you promise, Tom? I suppose so. Yes. Uh, Good. I knew I could reason with you. Now, back to bed, young man. But all the same, I won't sleep. Three. Four. It's one o'clock. Five. Six. Seven? Eight? Why don't you strike one? Ten? Like the clock at home. Eleven? Twelve? Thirteen? Thirteen? I have to write this by torchlight, because Uncle Alan says I mustn't put on the light. 
The clock has just struck thirteen. It often strikes the wrong hour, but they've always been real hours. If the clock has made an extra hour, I could be in bed for ten hours and have the extra hour for myself. I could get up without breaking my promise. But there can't really be a thirteenth hour, can there? I'm going to see what the clock fingers say. I'm going down to the hall. Find a light switch. I'll have to open the back door and let in the moonlight. Oh. oh, Peter, they lied to me. There is a garden at the back. There's a lawn with daffodils in the grass and a huge fir tree and yew trees, all different shapes. I've never climbed a yew tree before. Peter, it's a really big garden. I'm going to go out there and play tomorrow, whatever they say. Someone's coming. It's only a girl. Hello? Hello? She didn't seem to see me. Why didn't she see me? The hall's changed. It's full of different stuff, big old furniture. There's one of those weather things on the wall. A, a barometer, I think. A tiger skin rug. She's coming back. She's old fashioned too. I think she's a maid. A little fire in the fire. She's gone. She just faded away. All the old fashioned things are fading. The hall's normal again. I don't understand. I wasn't dreaming. And I wasn't scared, so it can't have been ghosts. The only thing that didn't change was the clock. But I forgot to see what time it said. Why did they lie to me about the garden? Have you had enough cereal, Tom? Yes, thank you. Aunt Gwen, do you believe lying is wrong? Oh, Tom, always. But do you think some special lies might be all right? Sometimes. Uh, you are asking if lying is ever justifiable, hmm? I suppose you're thinking of what are commonly known as white lies. Well, not exactly. I mean, what if someone is kept in the dark about something he'd enjoy because other people didn't want to tell him about it? Supposing some people actually said the thing wasn't there because they didn't want the bother of the first person using it. <laughs> what kind of thing was it? The second people didn't want the first people to know about and use. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the thing is, Gwen. Now, if I understand Tom correctly, some person or persons were lying simply for their own convenience and to the harm of another person or persons. Yes. I, I wondered if you thought that kind of lie might be all right. <clears throat> it would be utterly and obviously unjustifiable. I'm surprised you have any doubts. <laughs> well, it's time I was off. <sighs> now, I wonder where I put my umbrella and... Never mind, Tom. Uncle Alan has a very highly developed sense of right and wrong. So do I. Aunt Gwen, it was kind of you to put flowers in my room when I came. I'm so glad you liked them. It would have been nice if you could have picked them from a garden of your own. Yes, but there isn't a garden to this house, of course. No. What do you mean by that, Tom? Wouldn't it be nice if there was a garden at the back? It would be nice if we had wings and could fly. Suppose you could walk out of the door at the back this very minute and pick daffodils. I should be very surprised to find a daffodil anywhere outside now. Why? It's too late in the summer. Daffodils don't flower out of doors at this time of the year. Uh, but I've seen daffodils flowering out of doors at this time of year. You can't have. They're quite over. I I'm going downstairs. What for? Nothing special. Don't go this morning. This is the morning Mrs. Bartholomew goes downstairs to wind the grandfather clock. She doesn't like to be disturbed and we don't want to get on the wrong side of her. It's all right. I won't bother her. The garden is there. Oh, it has to be. Uh, 
Hello. Who are you? Are you come to help me clean my sparklers? Where's the garden? Whoop! Don't fall over the dustbins. I'm afraid this yard's the nearest thing we have to a garden. You're the boy who's staying in the first floor front, aren't you? Do you live in the ground floor flat? Yeah. Are you all right? Do you have a maid who lights your fire for you? What? <laughs> I even have to mend my own car. Are you interested in engines? And there really isn't a garden. <laughs> nope. Just this yard. What on earth's the matter? I'm, I'm all right. Uh, uh, wait, wait. Don't go in yet. Listen. What is it? It's old Ma Bartholomew coming to wind her precious clock. You don't want to run into her. There have never been children here. She might not like it. Uh, thank you for warning me. Um, those little gardens over the back fence. Uh, what about them? Well, that one with the tree in it. That's an old yew tree, isn't it? Well, I'm afraid I don't know much about trees. I've seen a tree like that before. Uh, is she still in the hall? Oh. I have a look. No, she's on her way upstairs again. You're safe. Dear Peter, the gardener's gone. There's a yard instead and some little houses. But I'm sure one of the trees is still there, over the fence in one of the little gardens at the back. It's a link, and the clock is a link. I've looked at the clock properly now. It hasn't got 13 numbers, just 12. There's a picture on the face. It's strange, but sort of interesting. It's a man with a gold face and enormous wings. He's holding a book, but I can't see the name of it. Uncle Alan and Aunt Gwen have gone to bed. I'm waiting till I'm sure they're asleep, then I'm going down to the yard. The moon's bright again, so I'll be able to see. I'm going to climb the fence to that yew tree and look for clues. Burn after reading. Did you strike thirteen again? It's here. The garden's come back. Peter, I wish you could see this. It isn't night time out here. It's morning. But it's very early. It's all misty. I think the whole garden's asleep. The fir tree looks as if it's wrapped in something. Oh! It's ivy growing all the way up the trunk. The grass is wet. It isn't even raining. It, it, it must be dew. <laughs> I don't leave any footprints. I can't see anyone. But I get the feeling there's someone else out here. No. No, I don't think there is. The sun is just coming up. I can see it through the trees. It's making something shine. Over there, behind all the ferns. <gasps> a pond. And round here, this must be a vegetable garden. Oh, a piece of paper. It's a note. To Oberon, King of the Fairies. Well, Oberon, I'll leave it there for you. Footprints? Those weren't there when I came out. A door's opening in the wall. Someone's coming. It's only a gardener. He hasn't seen me. He's going the other way. Oh, that's a sundial right up there. I've never seen one on the wall. The sun's just reached it. But I don't know how it tells the time. If it's morning out here, it may be morning in the flat. Aunt Gwen and Uncle Alan could be getting up. I ought to get back. There are daffodils, but 
but Aunt Gwen doesn't know about them. She doesn't know about the garden at all. She wasn't really lying to me. I don't want to leave it. But I can come back tomorrow night. I can come back every night. You and Peter get on very well, don't you, Tom? I expect you're missing him a lot. I write to him every day. Unfortunately, since he has the measles, he can't write back. <laughs> and writing to him isn't the same as being able to play with him and talk to him. But I do talk to him, in a way, in my head. Uh, are you saying you're in a telepathic communication? What's that? <laughs> Direct communication between one mind and another, without the use of any other medium, such as the written word. Oh, um... Well, I don't know about that. I just... Well, I just sometimes talk to Peter in my head. Well, I think that's very nice, dear. Peter, the season has changed again. It's different every time I come out here. It's gone back to summer now, and the roses are out. And there are poppies over there. It's been spring, summer, autumn, back to summer again. How can that be? I wish you could write back and tell me what you think. Oh. Footsteps. I'm near that big wall with the door in it. There's nowhere to hide. Unless I can open the door... But I can't. Why can't I? The latch seems to go soft. Where are you? Uh, here. Abel, where are you? Yes, Mrs. Melbourne. Abel, it's time this hedge were clipped. I'll see to that, Mum. Well, be sure that you do. No, come with me, please. There's a shot over here. I want you to move. Peter, I've discovered something important. I'm definitely invisible in the garden. The gardener ignores me, and last night there was a fierce-looking woman in a long purple dress who looked right through me. And there's something else. I've climbed every tree in the garden now, but I still can't open doors. I keep trying, but I can't. My hand somehow goes through the latch. I've been thinking, if the latch isn't really solid, perhaps the door isn't either. Perhaps I could push myself right through it. Well, it could work, couldn't it? I'm going to try tonight. The gardener. Can I squeeze through the door after him? Oh, he's too quick. Perhaps if I just lean on the door and push, I'm going numb all down one side. No, no, I'm going through. I'm really going through. It feels very peculiar. My stomach's churning. I'm scared to push my head through. But what if I get stuck halfway? Oh, I've done it. And there's the gardener. He's got his sandwiches. He's shutting his eyes. For all good things I thank the Lord. And may he keep me from all the works of the devil that he hurt me not. Oh, same grace for his sandwiches. When he goes back in the garden, I have to sneak through behind him. I don't want to push through a door again. Tom, dear, are you very bored staying with us? Oh, oh no. I'm not bored. I worry that there isn't enough to interest you here. Oh, there is. Uh, I'm all right, really. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. But it's always fine in the garden. Oh, I don't like it like this. Oh no! Not the fir tree! Who's 
blown over. Oh, that great tree just lying there. Uncle Alan? Yes, Tom? Was there a big storm last night? Uh, no, there wasn't. Uh, why do you ask? I, I thought I heard something. Oh, the barometer has been steady for some days. There is no likelihood of stormy weather. <laughs> but I saw her. Saw what, Tom? N nothing. Anyway, the other trees will still be there. Peter, the fir tree is back. I don't understand. I saw the lightning strike it. I saw it fall. <laughs> there are other people in the garden. Boys, I've never seen before. Oh, and the cat is tagging us again. I'm here too. Hello, I'm here. But he always tags us. Ignore her. What's the news on the rat sheet, Hubert? The miller says it's to be tonight. Young Barty's coming over and we'll all go along together. I'd like to come to the rat sheet. Oh, Hubert, will it be after dark? Definitely. You can bring the hurricane lamp, James. I'll take the air gun. Edgar, you're too young. You'd better stay behind. Hattie's too young. I'm not. Uh, can you see me, James? Oh, go on, Hubert. Let Edgar come. No, all right. We'll all three go. No, you can't see me. Oh, it's not much fun being invisible. Let's all run from Hattie. <laughs> you always run away from me. Oh. Hattie? Oh, you silly juggins, you. Now, come on, get up. Why don't you look where you're going? Oh, I've got green stains all over my pinafore. What will Aunt say? I expect they'll brush off. Oh, no, James, you're making them worse. Well, I can't help you. I'm off with the others. <laughs> I could have climbed trees with James, but he doesn't even know I'm here. Abel, have you seen Cousin James or Cousin Hubert, please? I don't want to find Cousin Edgar, though. They didn't come as far as this, Miss Hattie. Are they playing catch with you again? It's the only game they'll ever play with me. Why don't you ask them to let you do the running away and they do the catching? It would be no good. I can't run as fast as they can. They could give you a start. If they did, they'd never find me. I could hide. I know secret places, and I can keep really quiet. Nobody sees me, but I see everybody. Do you now? There they are! They're making for the house. I'm going after them. Is that a letter or a drawing, Tom? It's a drawing for Peter. Uncle Alan? Yes, Tom? Can a tree be lying fallen at one time and then be standing up again as it was before it fell? Hmm. Not unless you put the clock back. What clock? Oh, no particular clock. It's just a saying. To put the clock back. It means to have the past again, and no one can have that. Time isn't like that. What is time like, Uncle Aaron? Tom, you've asked enough odd questions of your uncle. He's tired after his day's work. No, no, Gwen. A child's questions should always be answered. <clears throat> All I would object to, Tom, is a certain lack of seriousness. Particularly when you asked how it would be possible to go through a door when that... That's easy. Going through a door is such an everyday happening. Not when the door is shut and then asking if it is possible for a person to be invisible. Well, sometimes in fairy stories... It's not a fairy story. And finally, this question about a tree lying fallen one day and the next against all the known laws of nature... It to... was a dream, wasn't it, Tom? No, it was real. Indeed. Mm. Tell us where and when this extraordinary incident happened. Where and when, Tom? It was a fairy tree. Goblin woodcutters laid it low, didn't they, Tom? It fell in a storm. Lightning struck it. Well, I'd still like to know... And now Tom mustn't speak until he's finished his letter. I nearly said too much and gave away the garden. I told about the door and the fir tree and being invisible. Luckily, they didn't believe me. But, Peter, it is all true. It's very strange, but I don't mind any of it. Except perhaps being invisible to everybody. There are three boys that come into the garden. Hubert is nearly grown up. Edgar is about my age. But I like James, the middle one. 
there is a girl who tags around after them. Her uh, Hattie or something. Tom, it's useless to write at length to anyone recovering from measles. The patient must not strain his eyes by overuse. I expect Peter's mother will read it aloud to him. Private. Confidential. This is the end of side one.